All right, everyone, so here is the weekly food pantry haul. Um, I missed this weekly food pantry for the last two weeks, so I did go today. Um, so this is not all of it. This is just uh, breakfast, breads, dairy, and snacks. And then I'll bring on uh, uh, produce and do that separate. And then I'll just bring on uh, normal food pantry items and uh, non-food items okay okay so let's start off we got a pretty good sized bag it's a one pound bag of berry colossal crunch it's multi meal brand and that's like the generic brand of uh, crunch berries captain crunch berries i used to eat that as a kid so every now and then i don't mind something like that um so we got a bag of that uh, we got a loaf and <laughs> I'm actually not moving the camera around. I have it on a tripod because um, since my gimbal broke, I don't have image stabilization on my video if I'm doing it with my phone. So every time I hold it, it's just shaky. So I have it on a tripod and I'll just bring the items up to the camera. So we got this loaf of raisin cinnamon bread, which is good. Spread some butter, have it with some coffee or whatever you drink in the morning. Got a pack of uh, hard rolls. And I hadn't, being September 1st, I haven't done my meal plan, of course. And I was going to make uh, those chicken thighs that we got from the monthly food pantry. I was gonna make that with mashed potatoes and everything, but this week so far has been nothing but running around errands and I ran some yesterday. I had to take Gypsy back to uh, PetSmart this morning because we noticed when I got home um, they did not cut the fronts that much and so I took her back and they cut it a little bit more. Um, so yeah and then I went to the pantry and so it's been a week of running uh, errands and so tomorrow I don't think I have any errands to run I don't have to go anywhere tomorrow so that means I get to cut the backyard grass <laughs> I cut the front yard earlier this week and now I need to work on the backyard so anyway um, I have no idea where I was going with that oh change of supper tonight so I was going to make some of those chicken thighs with mashed potatoes and Mexicorn um, but now I never took the chicken out and it's already 2.30. So since we got these hard rolls, um, Glenn likes to use these for like on brats or hamburgers. So I just took out a six pack of brats out of the freezer and while they're frozen, I just put them in some water. I've got them boiling. When they're done on the stove, I'll put them on the grill. Meanwhile, I'll um, warm up the beer and onions we had from the other day and add more onions so we're just gonna have brats on the grill tonight <laughs> so yeah all that for that right all that for that uh saying we're having brats <laughs> oh, i'm such a dork all right uh loaf of bread this is kroger bread so i guess i don't need to make bread i don't need to make any raisin bread so we got enough bread right now i uh, got this little bag of kettle corn um i think it's called skinny pop i have no clue and a, a block of pepper jack cheese badger state box glenn loves pepper jack cheese so i was very happy to see that for him um and he i usually just cut it up in slices and he likes to eat it in slices or i'll shred some or grate it and he can have it in omelets or whatever quesadillas or whatever got a pound of ground beef which is always good and an uh, eight ounce bag of sharp cheddar of uh, that fine shred which is what Glenn likes in his tacos so that's good um, I think I'm gonna freeze that and save it for whenever we had tacos all right so that is the oh <laughs> the most important thing I forgot look at this red velvet cake so I've never tried red velvet cake, so I'm looking forward to trying that. So I don't have to make a dessert tonight. Uh, yeah. So let me put this stuff away and I'll be back. 
Okay, so this is uh, just normal pantry items plus non-food items. Uh, we got some taco shells. Uh, this is Food Club brand. That's uh, Piggly Wiggly. And this is Betty Crocker uh, Instant Creamy Butter Mashed Potatoes. We got a can of Bush's Original Baked Beans. A can of Manwich. Thick and Chunky. And we got Libby's Sweet Peas. And for non-food items, we got a big tube of Crest toothpaste and two toothbrushes and one roll of toilet paper. Okay, so let me put this away and I'll bring out the produce. Okay, so for the last part of the weekly food pantry haul is our produce. And they always are very generous with produce. Um, usually they give one thing out to everybody. That doesn't count towards what you can get for produce. And then they usually allow you, uh, depending on how much they have, three or four different types of produce. So this week they were giving heads of cabbage out to everybody. And they gave me two and even wanted to know if I could take more. But being as it's just Glenn and I, um, two is plenty for now. Um, so yeah, they were giving cabbage out to everybody. And then the three selections for me was a bag of garden salad, some Roma tomatoes, and apples, which we got four of. And they look pretty good. So I don't know if these are like uh, Fuji apples. They almost look like Fuji apples. I don't know. Let me know in the comments what type of apple this is. What do you think it is? I think it's a Fuji. But there's four of them. Alright. So that's that's the produce we got. So I see some salads coming. I see some uh, basically like stir fry with chicken. And some pep I would just have to get some like peppers. Uh, the apples. Um, I did get that can of... Uh, apple pie filling so I can uh, actually just cut them up and uh, have them as a snack so yeah and definitely some salads coming uh, with the ground beef obviously we use a lot of that for taco uh, taco meat and obviously you can make it you can make a lot of different stuff with uh, ground beef but the ground beef we receive at the food pantries um, and this goes for all ground beef received at the food pantry it's a very fine shredded minced taco meat or uh, minced ground beef, which is perfect for tacos. So that's why we use the food pantry ground beef for tacos only. So, so yeah, I'm and I mean taco meat, whether it's going to be in tacos or a taco pizza or nachos or anything like that. So, all right, so that's gonna wrap it up for the food pantry haul and yeah uh, stay tuned for whatever's next okay so I remembered what I wanted to show you so as you can see uh, we harvested <laughs> and it sounds so weird to say we harvested because it's not that much and usually when people harvest they got like big bowls full full of veggies and stuff but we harvested some cucumbers from our garden look at these cucumbers so these two are oddly shaped and i think it's more because i've been watching videos on um cucumbers and and how they grow and why they grow in certain shapes um and i i believe um it's because of the way i have them growing normally cucumbers uh people most of the time grow them vertically and mine were all over the ground crowded with tom tomato plants and things like that so i think that uh, causes some of the cucumbers to grow in weird shapes like this this one this one grew really well and i picked them this morning i saw them on there the other day they still had a bunch of prick black prickly things on them um so i picked them this morning i'm still gonna probably leave them on the counter for a, a day or so um, yeah, this one looks yellow, and I know some people have said when they're yellow, they're bad. That's, um, I don't know if that's necessarily true, because the last cucumber we picked, 
that I showed you was yellow. I, I picked it and then I left it on the counter probably about five days and it was yellow. And when I cut it, it was really good. It actually was still a little hard. So I don't even know if it was ready to be picked. But I figured I, I'm going to go ahead and pick it and leave it on the counter. This one's not too bad. Uh, oddly shaped, yes. But what I'm going to do with these cucumbers is I'm just going to cut them in circles and put them in the vinegar and uh, sugar with uh, pepper and water that we make. And yeah, they're going to stay good for a long time. And yes, harvested two little tomatoes. Now we have a lot of tomatoes on the plants out there, but they're all still very green. Um, I wish they would start to turn red a lot at a time so we could pick a bunch at a time instead of eating like two, three, or four at a time. Um, but yeah, I picked them while there is still this color so I can leave them on the counter to uh, ripen and they'll look like this. This is nice and red. I picked this one while it was this color which is still almost green and now like five days later it looks like this so I'm gonna eat this one right now they're really good so these are the sweet 100s okay so I just wanted to show you the cucumbers and <laughs> the two little tomatoes we harvested today but you know what this is my first year I'm learning and maybe later I'll talk about some of the things I learned from uh, a vegetable garden this year and uh, some of the things I would change for next year. Okay, so yeah, I got the Bratzko and I got to get the, the Hot Logic Mini plugged in so uh, the beer can start warming up. Uh, it's almost time to grill these brats. All right, everyone, so here are the brats in, well, beer brats, I guess. <laughs> uh, yeah, we've been doing this quite a bit lately, but today we needed something quick and simple, and this seemed to be it. So uh, we got six brats in there. I boiled, they were frozen. I boiled them on the stove, and then I put them on the grill just to brown them, and now they're in there. They smell good. I've got a hamburger left from the other day in there, and I cut up a bunch of new onions. And put another beer in there so uh, it's like 4 30 right now we're gonna take gypsy and me on another walk at 5 30 and then we'll eat when we get back so and probably because it, it's getting darker early now um, so we want to take the walks earlier all right so stay tuned uh, I'll be back hey everyone so just wrapping up the day, um, Thursday. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm just wrapping up the video for today. And we, uh, we actually went for a second walk today, took Gypsy for a shorter walk. In the morning, we do a longer walk. And when we do a longer walk in the morning, we actually do some training with her, uh, teaching her commands. Uh, we show Gypsy a lot of love, but we also want her to know her boundaries. So, and we want her to be obedient. And she's got it, like, I think she's just naturally mellow to begin with. So, teaching her is very easy. So, um, she's to the point right now, like, when we're doing walks and we're coming to a cross where we have to cross the street, I stop. She, she automatically stops and she automatically sits. Um... In the first times where we were training her, I would have to say sit, but now she just automatically sits. She knows when I stop, she sits. So she's pretty much got that down pat. And I guess this is just going to be an update on everything that's kind of been going on. It's been uh, the last week, not just this week, but part of last week has just been trying to get stuff done and running errands and you know just so so yeah anyway um yeah we're just teaching our commands to be obedient know what, where her boundaries are what she can and cannot do so she's she's doing really well um when we're on our walk in the morning there's a park and we go in the parking lot 
her and I, and we walk a square where she would have to turn with my body. And we're practicing the left side. The right side, she's pretty good when we make right turns. Um, but she needs a little work on the left side. Especially if there's distractions like other people, other dogs. You know, she's very attentive to other people. Uh, just watching them. So, but that's also when we want to train her is when there's other people. So, yeah, we're just uh, teaching her. And right now we're also teaching her to uh, down, to lay down on her belly when she's sitting and then if I need her to lay down that she lays down so we actually started with uh, putting a treat in front of her mouth and like keeping it close to her mouth and while I'm sitting down just bringing the treat down slowly until she goes all the way down now I'm to the point where I don't even have a treat in my hand and she'll do it so she's doing really well and and for me I'm practicing walking her on my left side cuz it feels more natural natural on my right side but I think you're actually supposed to walk your dog on the left side I'm not sure but um yeah we do walk her with a prong collar because she does pull if it's just a leash uh, and she's very strong, so a prong collar is what we walk her with, so we have that control. And yeah, I'm just teaching her uh, commands and her boundaries. So um, we did uh, we do walk her every morning, and on Wednesdays we decided uh, Wednesday being Hump Day that that's her no training day, so she gets one day off from training. But she does still have to sit at corners before we cross the street. So hump day is her free day for no training. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, it's uh, working out pretty good. She's doing really well. And what's really good is she's relating like things to certain things. So one part of her training is when... I'm walking out the door of the house and she's not, I'm not taking her with me, but I don't want her to come to the door because we don't want her to accidentally slip out the door. Now, the thing with our house is if she were to slip out that door, there is actually, I guess you can call it a long mud room. There's a hallway, the length of the house that was an add on. So we actually have two doors to walk in. So if for some reason she gets out, she ends up in the hallway. So she doesn't actually get out. And that's what I like about having that hallway. So, but I still want her to know that she cannot come to the door if I'm leaving or if I'm coming in. So I bring her back probably about 10 to 12 feet and... I tell her to come and stay. I have her sit and then stay. And she's got that down pat. She, I don't even have to tell her anymore. Well, sometimes I do because she gets in those stubborn moods. Um, but it's very easy for her now. So I'll just say, come and stay. And she'll sit there until I walk out the door and she won't try to run out. She won't even try to walk to the door. And then when I'm coming in the door, because we have windows on the door that we can look into the living room uh, before we open that door. And I always look to see where she's at, even though we have that hallway and I know she won't get out of the entire house. I still don't want her to think it's OK to come to the door and try to slide through. So I see where she's at. And if I see she's close to the door, I'll yell back. I'm not yelling at her, but I'm being stern with her. And sometimes I have to be a little more stern because my voice, um, I'm not talking that stern to her. But anyway, I'll just barely crack the door open and I'll say back. And then she'll go back and she'll lay down and that, then I can open the door. So she's very good about that. And she's actually 
doing it on her own. Like when I take her outside and we walk out the door, whether it's to go to the bathroom or whatever to go outside, when we walk out the door, we're on the platform because we have the ramp for Glenn in there. She does it on her own. She sits and she won't move. She won't move until I say, let's go. Because that's her command when we're going to cross the street and I have her sitting. I say, let's go. And so she started doing that on her own in the hallway. So that's very good. It, it It's just unbelievable how what a fast learner she is. She has a lot to learn still. And she struggles on some stuff, but we're getting there. Um, so yeah, but this week, um, it's just been a lot of setting things up for her. Uh, yesterday, I ran a bunch of errands. Um, I took her to PetSmart to get her nails trimmed because she was in a foster home for like a month and then they never got her nails trimmed and they were long. So we set that up at PetSmart to get them trimmed. And then when we got home, when we were at PetSmart, I saw that her backs were good. And I was just so happy because she really was good uh, with the people there and letting them cut her nails that I just noticed the backs were good and I didn't really look at the fronts. So when I got home, uh, Glenn pointed out that the fronts don't, didn't look that much cut. So I called them and, and the dogs have that, uh, quick, uh, Glenn, Glenn explained it to me. It's a quick vein or something that they can't cut down to or, I guess if you have dogs, you understand. <laughs> Glenn, Glenn knows a lot about that. Um, but I called PetSmart and let them know, and they said to just bring her back. So I did this morning, and they cut them a little bit more. So, so yeah, yesterday I took her to PetSmart. I went to the cop shop to get her licensed with the city. And then I called and followed up with a vet because I filled out an online new patient registration form for her and I hadn't heard back so I called to follow up on that and they set up uh, an appointment for a general exam a new patient meet and greet but that they can't get her until November 1st which is probably fine because we don't need services we do want her to have a general exam to make sure she's okay but um, I'm still going to call around to other vets uh, to see, you know, what our options are. So, got that done. Um, I was going to set her up for a basic obedient class, and we're doing that because it was a requirement from the adoption center um, that she has to attend at least one obedient class. So, I'm signing her up, but September's classes are full. So we probably won't be able to do it till sometime October into November. But yeah, it's a eight week. It's basically, no, five week course. One hour a week for five weeks. So it's just basic obedience. Um, so I'm trying to get her set up with that. I compiled a folder for her, all her medical work that came from Texas. And I got her microchip registered on wagtopia.com she does have a microchip and when we go to the vet uh, i'm gonna see about getting her microchip uh, barcoded to her account there and what else uh i don't know i i ran errands and yeah i had a i have a whole task list um but it's on my phone which i'm recording on but i as i get them done i check them off so, yeah, it's been a lot of running around, making a lot of calls, just trying to get her situated. Um, but I think everything is good now. And tomorrow I have no er errands to run. I'm so happy. Nowhere to go. So tomorrow I am going to be working in the backyard, cutting grass, um, update on the kitties, and... Gypsy is, they are getting along fine now. Um, it only took a couple of days where Prissy was the first one to come out and kind of just like get to know her 
and they sniffed each other out and Prissy's not afraid of her at all she you know they can walk by each other and she's not bothered but Prissy was the first one to let Gypsy know who was boss. Um, Gypsy uh, can get a little rambunctious and she likes to sniff them as they're walking away. So Prissy quickly turns around, hisses at them and swats them or swats her. And she didn't get her, but she let her know, hey, <laughs> know your boundaries. So, so yeah, they actually all hang out in the same room now. Um, they pretty much nap at the same time and Gypsy being a puppy still she kind of doesn't know her own power and how big she is so um and she actually makes herself scared like her and Blackie and at different times both kitties have touched noses with Gypsy and you know they just slowly back up and they're fine so it's only going to get better as time goes on. They're not afraid to be on the bed together now. Um, you know, so it's going well. The The kitties and Gypsy are, are getting along. And uh, so, yeah. So that's a good update. Uh, I'm tired. <laughs> uh, like I said, we've been walking Gypsy every day. And in the mornings, it's well over a mile. I know that. Because our afternoon walk, which we took today before we ate supper, which was the brats that I grilled out. Um, Glenn took, has an app on his phone or something that uh, tells you how how long it is or how far it is. And the sh we call the afternoon the short walk. And it was like one point, just under one and a half miles. So, so I'm still walking probably two to three miles a day if we're doing her afternoon walk and for a while we weren't because there was just so much going on that we weren't able to get her afternoon walk in but we definitely get her morning walk in and now I'm setting the alarm at 5 30 I'm up by 5 45 and we're on our walk by 6 30 and it usually takes an hour with all the training and stuff it usually takes an hour to get home so we kind of got a routine down now and if it's a little chilly in the morning glenn takes a cup of coffee with him on the scooter <laughs> so so yeah everything's going well we're getting ourselves into a routine everything's starting to slow down a little bit um just getting to know what i need to do with her um i usually if she's in the house i usually take her out probably every four or five hours and if she has to go before that she'll let me know so yeah, she's she's good at that, letting me know if she's got to go out. But but yeah, everything's going well with that. Errands and um, getting all, all her stuff situated is starting to slow down now. Uh, like I said, no errands tomorrow, and I'm very happy uh, with the walking. Um, yeah, I'm very tired. And right now, I'm walking with steel-toed like hiker boots that I had when I was... At my job still two years ago um, so I'm and they're still toes so they're very heavy but I'm walking with those because I started off walking with my sandals and of course the, they have no no foot support at all um, so I started wearing those and they're heavy my I told Glenn this afternoon uh, when we were going for our afternoon walk is it feels like my feet are lifting weights literally <laughs> Um, so yeah, they are very heavy, but I know it's going to strengthen my legs and my, my feet, but yeah, right now my legs are sore. My feet are sore. Um, I haven't walked in years and we just started off into like a mile long walk. So, but that's okay. Um, I'm getting, I'm getting used to the walks and it's doing me good because I can already feel a little bit how different my, my shorts feel on me. Um, I feel better and yeah, I just feel better. So, so yeah. So, you know, it's not just us saving Gypsy's life, but she's saving my life by making me go for walks too. So, and she's bringing so much joy to us. It's, and it's going to change Glenn in the winter time because in the winter, 
you know, it can get a little depressing and, you know, I think his whole outlook is going to be different with Gypsy and because she really loves to just play with Glenn and kind of rough house a little bit with him. And so they got that bond and I'm not the rough houser. I'm more the um, <laughs> obedient one. Um, but yeah, so it's going well. She's definitely a, a blessing to our family. So, so yeah, that's that. Uh, tomorrow, I'll, when I do tomorrow's video, I'll take you to the garden and give you an update. Um, you saw an, earlier I had picked those cucumbers and a couple little tomatoes, but the zinnias are like everywhere. I got zinnias everywhere. And earlier in the week, I had a yellow swallowtail butterfly, which is my favorite. Um, on the zinnias and we had a monarch on there so I was very happy uh, tomatoes are growing everywhere but they're still green and the sunflowers are about to blossom I can see that sunflower <laughs> in the middle ready to blossom any day now so I'll take you to that and give you an update and I'll go over tomorrow what I learned from the gardening this year uh, what mistakes I made and how to do it different next year. So, so yeah, um, I still haven't gotten back to working on my website, but now that things are slowing down a little bit, I can start focusing on my website. Um, I did also open a Patreon account. If I don't know if you know what a Patreon account is. A lot of YouTubers and not just YouTubers that like artists and musicians, they have Patreon accounts um, where you can support either a YouTube channel or your artists or whatever. Um, you can make a reoccurring monthly donation. And I have two tiers set up and I kind of feel funny talking about this. But, um, so yeah, I'm just going to say it. I, I don't want anybody to feel obligated whatsoever to have to do that. It's not going to change what I do on my YouTube channel. I'm still going to do what I do on the YouTube channel. This is just a way if you want to just show your support for the channel, um, you can go on Patreon and I'll leave the link in the description below to my Patreon. I have two tiers, one $5 tier and one uh, $15 tier. Uh, a lot of people have three and four tiers, but I just kept it at two. And uh, if you become a Patreon, it'll show you the benefits there. Um, or if you just want to show your support on a monthly basis and donate like $5 a month, or if you want a little bit more benefit, um, the ten, $15 one. So um, you'll definitely, anybody who supports my channel through Patreon will get a, a shout out on every video in the form of I will do a list of all the Patreons and every video thanking you for your support. And I'll have digital downloads available to my Patreons that... Um, somehow incorporate my phot nature photography with inspirational sayings that you can have access to digital download those to your phone, your tablet, your computer, whatever you have. So those would be part of the benefits. Um, and, you know, just, I, I just opened it, so I'm not sure which way it, you know, I just put a couple things on there and then the $15 tier, you'll also get behind the scene access. Like it could be how it could be anything from, you know, any inspirational writings I might do to how I take a photo, what I see, how you see it through my eyes, what I look for or what inspiration, you know, I might do a video on, what inspires me to do the things I do. And the the Patreon is also one day at a time. And it's just, you know, about living 
life uh, one day at a time, you know, through hard times. So, so yeah, if you'd like to check it out and support the channel, I'd greatly appreciate it. Again, I feel funny talking about this, um, but the link is below. Again, don't feel obligated. It won't change what I do on the channel. I'll just do other things on the Patreon that you would have access to. So, so yeah, I just, I did that. Um, yeah, other than that, uh, I don't know right now. <laughs> I know I'm very tired and I'm probably ready to go to bed, but I do have a video to edit for tomorrow's upload. Um, I'm trying my best to get a video out every day, if not every other day. Um, so, yeah, I really want to do, I really want to put more focus on my videos uh, between YouTube and Patreon, because Patreon's going to have some videos as well that are not going to be on the YouTube channel. You're still going to get what you get on, on the YouTube, YouTube channel, but Patreon will have just a little bit of different videos. So, and I'll just see how Patreon goes. If I'm getting enough Patreons, then I may add more benefits in, in there. So we'll just see how that goes. So again, if you'd like to support the channel, Patreon link down in the description below. There. So I talked about it. <laughs> um, with that, I think I'm going to end the video here so I can get to editing. Um, yeah. All right. So thank you so much for taking time out of your day to watch my video. I really appreciate it. And I do appreciate all the support you show me. And with that, remember to live life, be good to yourself, and be good to others. Until next time.